But if you're not up for the interview, you might be watching A Christmas Carol, and of course the classic version of uh, The Christmas Carol with Alistair Sim that's on a article today on Infowars.com, The Case for Ebenezer. Now I've heard many times from libertarian objectivists, and that seems to be where this author is coming from, that this is merely a propaganda piece for socialism. I don't think we need to make that kind of false dichotomy. I don't think we need to choose between a mandated state-run charity system called socialism or between a system that celebrates greed and selfishness. I don't think that's really what's behind A Christmas Carol. I take exception to this article that's here. I don't think, I don't agree with his conclusions on that. I think the real issue here is compassion. And of course, you don't need to be a Christian to have compassion. And it troubles me deeply to see Christians who don't have compassion, who don't have compassion for people who are suffering under the jackboot of government, people who don't have compassion for those who are being taken out and tortured because they're from a different country or they're from a different religion. If you don't have that kind of compassion, as we see illustrated in A Christmas Carol, I think you really need to check your Christianity, examine yourself. But I think on the other hand, it really does miss the mark in a way that's not talked about by this author. And that is this man, Ebenezer Scrooge, does not achieve respect or redemption because of his good deeds. What's missing out of A Christmas Carol, ironically, is really Christ to a large degree. Yes, Tiny Tim talks about going to church and about those who made the lame walk. But for the most part, the redemption, the free gift of redemption that we celebrate at Christmas is what's missing. And I think the thing that's also missing for libertarians is we need to understand, as, as uh, G. Edward Griffin pointed out, that we need to act collectively for individual liberty. And I don't think we need to celebrate greed and selfishness. I think we need to move beyond that. Now, in a real bah humbug, Fox News reports that French feminists are inserting warnings into Chris, children's Christmas gifts. They're actually going into department stores and slipping notes and little pamphlets that will be found once they open up their Christmas presents, telling them that this is a sexist gift. Why? Well, because maybe it's a doll that's targeted towards girls, or maybe it's something that's targeted towards boys. They say, uh, the purpose of the operation was not to make parents feel guilty, but to, quote, raise awareness about the fact that toy makers and sellers play a part in the fact that not a single little girl asked Father Christmas for a sword. All I can say is <laughs> these French feminists have probably never had children. They don't understand that there really is a difference between boys and girls, and if you didn't give them the sword, they'd be sword fighting with sticks. I know I've seen it with my own children. Well, Merry Christmas from the government. FEMA is now demanding flood victims return checks. That's right, no one likes to get a message, they say on Fox News, from a bill collector, especially if it's from the federal government at Christmas time. Now nearly 250 flood victims are going to get recoupment letters from FEMA demanding payback for checks that have been issued to them from FEMA. This is for floods in 2013. They say it's estimated $2 billion in property losses over an area of 2,000 square miles. And the amounts that, the, that FEMA is now demanding from people here at Christmas time, not giving them much time, giving them 30 to 60 days to pay up or else, these amounts range from anywhere from $200 to $20,000. They say FEMA admits that these payments were made in error. There you go. But of course, who's going to pay up? These people will pay up, even though they sent these things out and it's been quite some time and these people aren't necessarily going to have the money. Maybe they can work with the Federal Reserve to confiscate their homes. And then abroad, we see that ISIS is turning Christian churches into torture chambers where it forces believers to convert to Islam. The Islamic State militants are turning Christian churches into torture chambers where they force attendees to confess as Islamicists. And they point out that the reality is, is that this group will stop at nothing to raise funds for their terrorist mission and to destroy churches and Christianity itself. And think about our foreign policy at this time of year. Think about the fact that in Iraq and Afghanistan, where Christianity had existed with Islam for centuries, for centuries, after we went there with our foreign policy and stayed there for a decade, they've essentially eradicated Christians from those areas. 
Look at what happened in Syria, where we funded ISIS. Yes, they will stop at nothing to fund their agenda. They will work with the CIA, who created them, who gives them money for their agenda of stamping out Christianity. Now, finally, we see an army lab is looking to essentially create a literal version of the proverbial fly on a wall. Yes, they say the army lab is asking help building a wing-flapping robot fly. This is reported from Computer World. And here's the thing that I think is interesting about this. They're going to set up an open campus program that's designed to bolster shrinking research and development budgets and accelerate development of innovative new systems by inviting civilian developers and investors to help them advance. So they say their research and development budget is shrinking. I find that surprising since it seems like they have a blank check for anything from the surveillance state that they want to build. But the real question is, why would scientists and developers help them to do this? Why would they create yet another way for them to watch us, to record us, to put us on a naughty or nice list? This is the tool of oppression. This is what William Binney, the person who was global head of the NSA said. He said, this is the way you establish a, a tyranny, like the ones that he had observed throughout his career of decades. He watched the East Germans, he watched the Russians do the same things to their people. Now we have that capability, and as he pointed out, we have a police state. And as evidence of that police state, look at this article from nextgov.com. They point out the Obama administration aims to create insider threat job specialty in order to plug leaks. Now listen to this quote, I think this says it all. Quote, it's a privilege to work in this program, and the only reason you are there is to help protect your colleagues, not to out them, not to out them, not to expose any criminal actions by your colleagues, not to expose the fact that they are violating our rights, that they are violating the Constitution that they swore to uphold as part of the government. No, you're there because you're there to protect your colleagues, that kind of groupthink. And then they underscore that. At the very end, they say, they have to view themselves as part of a community. That is dangerously misplaced loyalty. That is at the heart of the police state. That is what we have to change in this upcoming year. Now stay with us. Right after the break, we're going to have a special message from the Federal Reserve, and we're also going to have, after the program, we're going to have a short about the creation of the Federal Reserve and the parallels between it and It's a Wonderful Life. Stay with us. Sold out for weeks due to the difficult and extensive proprietary process behind its creation, the exclusive InfoWars Life Secret 12 formulation is now back in stock in the last limited shipment of 2014. The most bioactive form that has been created with our proprietary process. This ultra clean vitamin B12 nutraceutical has been carefully crafted and developed over the last two years and is based on cellular science of how your body actively absorbs essential nutrients. Secret 12 is taken by mouth, right on the tongue, and then swallowed. No needles, no injections. Vitamin B12 deficiency is linked to scores of serious problems. And Secret 12 is a fusion of two organic proprietary forms of vitamin B12, bringing you a true nutraceutical quality vitamin B12, Secret 12. Secret 12 is an excellent Christmas gift and is tailor-made to boost your New Year's resolutions. Supplies of Secret 12 are very limited. Secure yours today at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. 